Hello fellow souls. Thank you for joining me today. I'm coming back and checking out my my channel. And today I thought we might talk about the law of attraction. And yes, it's been talked about so much by so many different people. And I'd just like to share with you my perspective and my understanding and how I use it and how it's helped me in my life. Um, and perhaps my perspective might offer some clarity in your perspective and just um, add a little extra oomph in manifesting. So I first got introduced to the Law of Attraction in 2006 when The Secret came out. And I actually watched that in the theaters. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and it was very informative. And it, I have to say, I watched it and I really didn't understand it. I just took the story of that mag magnanimous woman who was diagnosed with cancer and um, decided to practice something different than she always had for her whole life and she got a different result. And um, I found that very inspiring. But Law of Attraction didn't just start in 2006 with The Secret. It's just been the first motion picture, I believe, that has been made about it, or at least into mainstream. And I think there's several after, um, even currently, which I, I, I don't know about yet. But I watched it then, and then later in 2012, six years later, I started uh, watching, or listening rather, to Abraham Hicks, and she does a lot with uh, the, the Law of Attraction, and she explains it um, very detailed in her own way. And I must say, in the very beginning, I didn't really understand a lot of what she was saying. It just, it wasn't computing. And, but I, I just kept listening to it. And the more I listened to it, the more things started to click into place. And the more things I started to see as examples in my own life on um, how that was working for me in a true statement. So I'll just share with you a little bit first, first off, um, like attracts like. So we've heard that. What does that mean? Like attracts like, um, like attracts like if, like for instance when you wake up in the morning and you stub your toe and you get mad about that and you're very angry about that and you stay in that anger and then you get a phone call and the phone call is some more bad news and you're angry about that and then you get in your car and you go and you drive and then you realize oh I'm stuck in I'm stuck in traffic now there's there's like back up on the freeway and now I'm stuck here and you go and turn on the radio and another angrifying song comes out <laughs> and then you get to work and then, and as you can see, I'm sure we've all had days like this and it's just a never ending snowball. And it started off with your energy in the beginning of the day. So I've experienced that myself too. <laughs> it's not fun. The trick is to switch your attitude, but yes. So like attracts like similarly when you're in love and you're flying high and you have, have had a taste of that special someone that ignites your soul in a positive way. And you're walking on air. There's nothing that you could do that's, that's wrong. You're infallible. And, and you'll notice that you walk into this grocery store and there's no lines and you're the first one there. And then, you know, you, you go and, and, and do something else and, oh, hey, you won a prize. You're the first person that came in today, here's a prize or whatever it is. You, you just notice these synchronicities that keep happening and happening throughout the day and you turn on the radio, again, the radio. Um, and the song is like, I'm walking on sunshine. And so you're like, yeah. And it, it lines up with however you're feeling because you're projecting that. So another thing to, the next thing to really understand is that we are vibrational beings. What does that mean? I'm solid, I can feel myself, right? But if you're familiar with Nikola Tesla, he, he says, if you wish to understand the universe, think of energy and frequency and vibration. So looking into that, everything is a vibration. And if you think about our thoughts, our thoughts are a vibration. So for instance, when I have a thought, I'm going to make a sandwich. You have that thought and you think about it. You maybe, some of you even envision it. I'm gonna have bread, and then I'm gonna put mayonnaise, and then I'm gonna put lettuce, and then I'm gonna put however you build your sandwich. You're constructing it in your mind. Maybe it's as you're walking down the stairs to the kitchen, but you're constructing it in your mind. And thoughts are energies. Thoughts have a frequency. Thoughts resonate, and they resonate out into the universe. 
So that's why they always say, be careful what you're thinking, be careful what you wish for, be careful, be careful how you talk to yourself, be careful how you talk to other people. Words, thoughts, and feelings, they all matter. It seems like they don't, but they do. <laughs> they really do. Um, I once knew somebody who would constantly say throughout her whole life, when she would see something sad or a sad situation, oh, that just hurts my heart to see that. Oh, that hurts my heart. Oh, that hurts my heart. And lo and behold, later in her life, she started having heart problems and heart conditions. Well, that's another thing about being conscious and aware of your thought patterns and your thought processes and when you're saying them in real life. So, like attracts like, um, vibrational beings, we are vibrational beings, thoughts can turn into things, because when you go downstairs after you've thought of your construction of your sandwich, you go and construct your sandwich and you do it. You have the actual physical work, but it still gets manifested in reality to where you can eat it now. So, it, what you think and how you feel does matter. So, that leads me to the next segment, which is using feelings as fuel. See, that's the biggest thing. So your feelings are very strong. Your emotions are very strong. And I'm sure many of you have experienced wonderful highs and lows of that. And it really matters on how you feel about it. And I'll give you an example. I really wanted a little puppy. I really wanted a little puppy. At that time, my landlord said no pets. And I didn't pay any mind to that, not like I was going to do anything bad, but I just knew that it was going to work out in the end. So I thought of the puppy I wanted. I thought of the kind of puppy I wanted. I thought of how am I going to feel around my puppy? How's that puppy going to make me feel? I'm going to feel joy. I'm going to feel laughter. I'm going to feel giddy like a kid again. Um, I'm going to feel, you know, attachment, all those wonderful feelings. Um, and I just focused on those feelings as if I already acquired it. And that's the key and that's the trick. So you don't think about it like, oh, when I get the puppy, I'll be happy. Mm -mm. The whole fuel is feeling the emotion as if you have it now, because that's sending a signal out into the universe that the universe then has to respond to. And so long story short, I would do that. And I made a list of attributes of Oh, my puppy is gonna like to play ball. My puppy is fun loving and playful. My puppy uh, likes uh, other people and brings joy to other people's lives. Um, and I would just make this list of what it looked and felt like to have this puppy. And I focused on it and I don't know how much time passed, it's really irrelevant, but uh, I honed in on those feelings and I acted as if I had the puppy already. I'm not talking crazy stuff like I'm playing with an imaginary puppy. I just felt like, yes, my puppy is there. My puppy is coming. I'm going to find my puppy. I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I have the feeling of my puppy here already. And so what ends up happening is, like I said, the universe then has to respond to that feeling and fill in that fill in that void or fill in that gap of what you're what you're wanting and expressing as Abraham says you're sending out rockets of desire and so I did that for a while and then lo and behold I found in the newspaper the exact specific puppy I was looking for with all of the listed attributes that I had originally wanted and I talked to my landlord and I asked my landlord hey I would love to have this puppy. I'm gonna get him taken care of by the vet. He's gonna be looked at. He's gonna be in tip top shape. He's gonna have all of his uh, vaccinations done by the vet, whatever is needed to be done. And I assure you I'm a responsible owner. Well, first things first, I got the, got the approval from the landlord and then I got the puppy and then the rest is history. I have my sweet little, sweet little puppy now and he's everything I hoped and dreamed he could be. Um, I think where a lot of people get stuck with Law of Attraction is they start to take score. They start to, they start to realize that what they have or what they want isn't here yet. It just hasn't manifested. It's on its way to you. It's making its way to you if you believe that and trust that, no matter, despite what you see in the physical evidence of your reality now, trusting and knowing that it is making its way to you as you speak 
And then not taking score. That's like I said, that's the trick about it. Not taking score. So what does that mean, not taking score? Well, I've been positive all this time and I still don't have my puppy or I still don't have my mate or my companion and I still don't have my job or I still don't have my whatever. Well, let's, that brings me to my next point, which is the universe is all inclusive universe. What does that mean, all inclusive? It means it doesn't understand the word no. If you describe something, it's all inclusive. So even if you say, I don't want to think about the elephant in the room, what's the first thing you're gonna think about? And there's nothing you can do about it. You're gonna think about the elephant in the room. So you're not trying to take score as in, well, I don't see my, my significant other here yet. I, ha I don't see this. You're taking score that it's not there yet. It's tricky, I know, because it seems like, well, what if it takes a long time? Well, the thing is to let go of time and know that it's coming and that it's on its way here and that it will happen exactly as it's meant to happen, exactly when it's meant to happen. You're gonna be going to the store, you're gonna be flying high, you're gonna be feeling like, yes, I have everything I want in my life. I have those wonderful feelings of being with a partner and that, that feeling of support and that feeling of being loved. I'm gonna feel that now, even though I don't have a partner, I'm going to feel that now and I'm gonna go out in my day. And then you go out one day, you don't know when, you just keep doing that every day. You're gonna go get your coffee like you always do, but in a good attitude. And then that's when you're gonna, that's when it's gonna happen. It's when you're gonna meet that someone or that something is when you finally accepted the reality of, yes, I, I'm accepting those feelings. Like for instance, for a spouse, how would you feel if you had everything you wanted in a spouse? Well, for me, I would feel loved. I would feel joyous. I would feel appreciated and cherished. So I take those feelings with me and I bring them into the day every day, regardless of what evidence the universe is showing me to the contrary, regardless of that. I adopt that attitude of, I have this fulfillment that I am seeking, I have it. And then that's what I mean by like attracts like, because then the, you're putting out that feeling of everything you wanna feel in a relationship, the positive, positive feelings, and then like a magnet, that gets attracted and drawn to you. You ever notice how in abusive relationships, um, the spouse or the partner, one of them, will keep repeating that same pattern, will keep getting one, one abusive partner after another. And it's perpetuating that feeling of, of not being good enough, of not deserving better, of, of, feeling like a, possibly a subconscious need to be being punished. Um, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's important to break that pattern. So I, um, it's, it's a very important thing to break that pattern. And abusive relationships, it, it can be a bit tricky and, and it's gotta get yourself out of a negative situation like that. But, um, you can see how the pattern repeats itself again and again. And it's not gonna change until you change. You change what you're manifesting and what you're bringing into awareness and what you're choosing to focus on and what you're choosing to think about. And um, that's pretty much, pretty much what I've come to learn about the law of attraction is it's easy to get in your own way. It's very easy because really we haven't been trained in a lot of different things such as simple breathing techniques to calm yourself down when you're upset, to, to get out of your head and get more into your heart. And um, these are things that we can now learn and we have the tools and the, the resources to teach ourselves and to change, to change our response to things and to change what we're manifesting and what energy we're putting out into the world. So, that's pretty much it. That's really all I've got on that. Um, I hope that made some sort of sense to you. And um, let me know what you think in the comments below if that offered any bit of clarity or did I confuse you more? Um, but let me know uh, your, your thoughts in the comments below and then um, we will continue this 
uh, later and talk about some other things in a, in a different video at a different time. But I thank you guys for joining me and um, until next time. <laughs>